Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Ali. Welcome back to my world of stocks and welcome back to my three stocks on sale series for the month of July 2024, where in each episode I pick three new stocks that I feel look attractive at today's prices for the long term. And to make it more fun and interesting, I specifically choose one lower risk, one medium risk, and one higher risk option for added variety. As always though, just please remember to do your own research and make your own decisions. Everything we discuss today is just my own opinion, but if you are excited to see what options I picked for this month, then let's not waste any more time, my friends. Let's go ahead and jump straight into this and take a closer look. All right, so kicking things off here with the lowest risk option first. This month, I decided to introduce a new stock that I've actually never talked about before on the channel, and that is the biotech giant AstraZeneca, ticker symbol AZN, who I feel really doesn't get talked about so, uh, as or I should say, as often as other big names in the pharmaceutical space, simply because the stock hasn't fallen by nearly as much as its peers, which gives the perception that the stock is expensive at these levels, trading near an all-time high, while many of its peers have actually fallen by huge amounts, especially in the case of Kenview, Bristol Myers Squibb and Pfizer, who are each down over 30%, 40%, and even 50% from their highs, and thus carry some really cheap valuations with huge dividend yields. But here's the thing, guys. First of all, it's not like AstraZeneca has really skyrocketed by some gigantic amount. They're only up really around 100% in the past 10 years, which I know is really good performance, but it's not some crazy gigantic amount that automatically makes them too expensive to be a good investment. In fact, we've seen tons of other stocks soar by hundreds and even thousands of percents during that same time. So for it to double in 10 years, yeah, that's just kind of regular performance for what is already a very solid company, which by the way, you also get what you pay for here because in the case of AstraZeneca, well, I feel like they're the best performing player in the space right now. I mean, just in the past few years alone, their sales have nearly doubled in size while their free cash flow has also tripled too. That's huge for such an already large and well-established pharmaceutical giant to still be putting up that kind of growth. And the crazy thing is that that growth isn't even dissipating with sales expected to still climb by another 13% plus this year with about the same growth on the bottom line expected per year over the next five years too. And that's because their future looks brighter than ever really thanks to all the investments that they've made in various acquisitions as well as in-house development with one of the largest pipelines of treatments at over 180 different projects spanning across oncology, cardiovascular, respiratory, and and immunology, of which 20 are expected to launch by 2030, which management also claims will propel them to as much as $80 billion in revenue by that year. That's close to double what they're doing right now. And even beyond that, there's huge growth opportunity still in areas like gene editing, weight management, and more that they're already investing in heavily right now. So again, you just don't see this type of growth in such an already large and dominant and established pharmaceutical giant like this, and yet the valuation is actually still pretty good with a forward P ratio of less than 19. For context, the healthcare average is like around 20, and their PEG ratio of less than one is also considered a great value just on its own as well. Plus you even get a solid dividend yielding about 2.5% to top it all off, which keep in mind that while AstraZeneca hasn't uh, grown that dividend every year, they've at least paid it for decades with the trajectory pretty much always moving upward. So it's very likely to continue getting larger too. Again though, I just really feel like this is a stock here that gets overlooked for the wrong reasons. And if you're a long-term minded investor looking for a quality biotech that will very likely continue Continue to see both the stock and the dividend grow larger over time, well, I think this is one here that is worth a closer look. I don't own it myself yet because I've really been chasing the higher dividend yields of uh, some of its peers and their cheaper valuations that have seen their stock, pr stock prices have fallen, dividend yields have risen, I've been kind of chasing those myself, but I might have to pick this one up too uh, here soon as I just feel like they are much lower risk compared to those others that I've been buying. But uh, yeah, I kind of like the trade off here. I think this one is a solid pick. Now, I will say though that if you do want a higher dividend yielding stock with a dirt cheap valuation, then stock number two, our medium risk option, is definitely worth considering. And for that stock, well, 
we're actually gonna go right back to that list that we just looked at and we're gonna stick here with another biotech this month. And usually I go with Pfizer in this scenario, but I've talked about them so much lately that I wanna uh, switch things up here and uh, tell you why I think that Bristol Myers Squibb, ticker symbol BMY, is just as good of a choice here and here's why. Just look at some of these figures, guys. From the top, Bristol has now lost about half their entire value and is trading lower today than just about any other time in over a decade. The result of which is that it's left a giant dividend yield now of close to 6%. I think the only time that it was higher than that was during the Great Recession. And by the way, they've paid that dividend to every year for over 90 years in a row. That's nine decades of dividend payments. But then, uh, you know, if all of that sounds so great, why then is the stock falling right now? Well, it all has to do with current issues that are really disappointing investors at the moment. And that's where all the risk comes in. Because if you're looking for a great performing biotech right now, well, this isn't like AstraZeneca that is obviously on fire. Bristol, on the other hand, is in much more of, I would say, like a turnaround phase where you're going to have to wait a bit for their longer term prospects to start contributing to their growth again. Because at the moment, Bristol is facing really one of the steepest patent protection cliffs in the industry with several key drugs either having already lost protection or expected to lose it by 2028, like in the case of their best selling blood thinner and cancer medications. Eliquis and Optivo, uh, respectively, which, by the way, make up the number two and number four spots of the top 10 drugs to lose patents protection over the next five years, according to ProClinical Research. And as a result of some other ongoing issues, too, well, sales for the company have actually steadily decreased in recent years, which isn't a good sign, with even this year also expected to see over a 90% reduction to their profits by EPS. However, this is where really all the bad news mostly ends for me as an investor because, well, first of all, that loss in uh, EPS is mostly due to one-time charges from their $14 billion acquisition in Karuna uh, Pharmaceuticals, which, when accounted for, their PE ratio, uh, it appears to be extremely high at over 70 right now. But when you look beyond that, well, their EPS is actually expected to recover in the following year, which drops their PE ratio to less than 6 that is dirt cheap, guys. And even more so when you look at their price to free cash flow, which sits below seven. Guys, that's much less than the majority of their peers. In fact, that's a similar valuation to many tobacco companies, which have always been considered some of the cheapest stocks in the entire market. And so when you add that with the dividend and the fact that Bristol has now acquired multiple different companies to build out their future pipeline, including just some very recent ones, again, in Karuna, but also Marathi Therapeutics and also Ray's Bio, well, all three of which, by the way, have experimental therapies and late stage clinical trials that could become blockbuster drugs, generating over a billion dollars in annual revenue each, with also their already existing growth portfolio of 12 younger drugs. They're starting to see momentum, having increased their sales by 11% last quarter, year over year. Well, all of these positive signs together, I feel, leaves me with a, a really well-established leader in this space that is currently down because of a short-term kind of transitionary period that does add some risk to it. It's why I chose it as a medium risk option, but longer term, uh, I also feel that it does give me a lot of turnaround potential that I just think is worth taking a chance on. So I've been buying the stock myself for that really cheap valuation and the big dividend. All right. With all of that said, though, we are now down to the third and final stock. This is the highest risk option of the bunch. And this month, I'm going with probably my top two favorite international stock in the entire world. And that is Baidu, ticker symbol B-I-D-U. I'd probably choose Alibaba as my number one favorite, but Baidu is a close second. And most recently, I just can't believe how cheap their stock has become, having now lost well over 70% of its entire value from the top, leaving it also trading for one of the absolute lowest prices that we've seen in over a decade. And look, there's a lot of reasons that we could point to for this, namely tech crackdowns in China, rising competition in AI and tech, and just an overall slowdown in the country's economy that is making things even more challenging for Baidu, with sales only growing now by 
by a mid to low single digit rate. But I just think that at these levels, we're now talking about an incredible value here in the stock that we would really only ever get from probably a Chinese player like this. Because obviously you're not gonna get something like Google for anywhere close to Baidu's price, not even in the same like universe. Uh, it really only can come from a Chinese stock like this with that inherent risk um, that Chinese stocks carry uh, because they are Chinese stocks that ha have a lot of, uh, I don't have time to get into all the issues that they have, but you know, they have VIE structures, you have little rights as a shareholder. There's a lot of things that could potentially go wrong with a Chinese company that is publicly traded. And, um, you could be left with very little uh, protection there as a foreign investor. But uh, I just feel that in exchange for that risk, again, I categorize it as a high risk option, but in exchange for that, I just see, I just think there's so much future potential here that makes it kind of worth it. Now, just to give you like a few examples of what I'm talking about here in terms of what makes Baidu so special? Well, they're not only already a leader in China of search with by far the most market share, uh, also digital advertising with the fourth most market share, cloud with the number one most cloud AI market share, and even autonomous driving with the first launched robo taxi service in the country. But most important of all, they are genuinely a leader of AI in the entire world, guys, with more AI patents than any other company out there. And so when we think about the future of AI and how companies want to use it to dominate business. We know that it's one of the biggest areas of investment right now, maybe the biggest. And we know that countries and militaries want to dominate AI for what it means to just their own kind of competition and dominance in the world, but also their economies for defense purposes, for civil infrastructure, the way they want to run everything more efficiently and profitably. And so if you're a weaker player, well, AI can kind of help you grow to the next level. If you're an already established leader, AI can help you maintain your dominance. There's so many reasons why I think so much of the world is going to rely just so heavily on AI and it's become very obvious at this point. And because of that, I just can't envision a scenario where Baidu becomes any less relevant uh, as a world leader in this space where they hold so many patents and so much technology and even all the data that they have access to and that they will continue to collect over time. And uh, when I look at that entire picture, there's just no way in heck that I think it should ever be trading at one of the lowest prices here in you know decades. With the valuation now also close to 40% cheaper than the sector on PE and PEG ratios, that's mind-blowingly low for a world leader like this in AI. And it's also more than 50 to 60% cheaper than their own five-year averages too. Guys, there's similar tech giants that trade for literally trillions of dollars in market cap in large part because they're not Chinese, which I grant you is a big deal again for Baidu, uh, and it's why I consider them high risk. But for Baidu to only be worth around 30 billion by comparison, I mean, damn, they did over 130 billion in sales and over 20 billion in net income profit just last year alone. So how in the world can they be trading this low? It is truly mind boggling to me, but again, it mostly has to do with them being a Chinese stock. And yeah, that's a risk that will pretty much always be there, but. I just don't envision that being as maybe as big of a threat as most others believe. I, I could be wrong for sure, but look, you know, the US and China, I don't think are ever gonna go to war, at least not anytime soon. And even if they do, you know, the world probably ending at that point, I think we'd have bigger concerns than just this one little stock. But I also think that it's in China's best interest for their own AI leader to be a global player with exposure to foreign markets and foreign investments. So I don't think it'll ever be delisted or shut down either. It's just my opinion. I can't, I could be wrong. And there is certainly a lot more nuance here that, uh, you know, we'd probably have to dive into as opposed to this just being a short YouTube video, just giving you my quick thoughts on a beaten down stock here that I think has a lot of potential. But look, that's why I chose it as the high risk option. I grant you that it's you know not great for everyone. It's only a very small position of mine. It's around one to 2% of my portfolio. I keep it very low for a reason. But at these prices, I do think that it is a stock worth uh, betting on because I just don't think we'd ever get a stock like this at these prices if, if it weren't you know, if it didn't have those other issues, but uh, the potential there is tremendous for everything that Baidu does. Anyway, those are my thoughts on these three stocks, guys. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Sorry for rambling a little bit, but uh, let me know what you think about these stocks. Do you like any of them? Do you own any of them? Are there any other stocks that you're buying out there? Let me know down in the comment section. Maybe I can do a video on them in the future too, but thanks again for stopping by my friends. Thank you for all your support and I will catch you in the next video. All right, take care everybody. Bye-bye.